Game of Thrones season three, episode five and six. Let's go. Oh, let's see if Astapor is burnt down. Yeah. Do you think so? Probably so. Time to move on now. Let's bet. <laughs> if, I, if it's burnt down, you have to unload the dishwasher. Oh, hell no. You tripping for that. <laughs> I'm just playing. I got you, baby. I'll do it. We're bougie now, guys. We got a dishwasher. I like, never did that in our whole yeah, lives. My it, mom like thinks that's a sin. That's the truth. Yeah, my mom doesn't use one either. 31. I only got one. <laughs> what a shame. Yunkle? Yeah, that is weird. What, Look, it has another, it has another like open crotch statue. <laughs> Maybe it's related to that place. Maybe. Because it didn't show Astapor. Maybe that's where Danny's going. Ching -ling. <laughs> Cast your light upon us. Lord of light, defend us. Oh no. They sound like Melisandre. Show us the truth. Strike this man down. If he is guilty, give strength to his sword if he is true. Oh, he's about to go straight wicker man, ain't he? <laughs> For the night is dark. Oh no, I'm full of terrors. No. Full of terror. Oh, was that he was that him warming up for the sword fight? I guess so. Who do you want to win? I mean not <gasps> His is actually on fire when Stannis's wasn't. I guess the hound. Let's go, hound. That's such torture for the hound, though, because he does not like that fire. He turned into Donkey Kong, did he? I can't really tell who's winning, to be honest with you. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, he's dead. Some sort of, some Lord of Light, right? Innocent, he didn't do it. Bring him back from death and darkness. His flame has been extinguished for stories. What in the world? That man is gone, bro. Oh, yeah. Don't. What's she doing? She's trying to go finish the job. <laughs> yeah, she wants to hound dead. That's on her list, like right? More than your butcher's boy. <laughs> he will. <gasps> Shut up. Wasn't he just dead? But not today. Oh. Whoa, the resurrection. I was about to say that. How? The Lord of Light must be real. Yo, the Lord of Light. <laughs> so we might better start rooting for Stannis. Oh, little did we know. He was on to something. Rell says there are crows patrolling on the wall. 19 castles guarding the wall. How many are manned? One, right? Three. Oh, three. He's being too honest. You sure yeah. That? Which three? Castle Black. Everyone knows Castle Black. Which others? He's watched by the sea and the Shadow Tower. I feel like he, that was incorrect from the lore. How many men remain in Castle Black? Yeah, I don't remember the Shadow Tower. I never remember that either. I don't remember writing it. What happens to your eagle after I kill you? Does he drift away like a kite with his strings cut? He's no crow. Because you want him inside you. Don't make him one of us. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. I like you, boy. <laughs> but if you lie to me, I'll pull your guts out through your throat. You really probably will, too. A thousand men. We'll but that's what he knows of, right? Because they didn't deconstruct when he was there. Right, and he wasn't there that long, just like, what, a year? I don't need you to Something like that, right? Of course you do. We saw Rattleshot when he was about to cut your throat. Who vouched for you with months? Oh, it seems you owe me a debt. Give it back. If you want it, come steal it back. Egret! Nah, she's just trying to get you in the woods, you know? Egret! <laughs> this is what marriage looks like, okay? Egret! Else. <laughs> Dang, dude, where'd they find this? <laughs> Why are they out there? I know. <laughs> Time you proved yourself. Why is anyone dirty? You swore some vows. I want you to break them. I want you to see me. Oh, wait, he's new to this, right? Yeah. <laughs> it just Roz. That's the only other person you, like, try to hook up with. Oh, wait, Roz don't even count. Everybody hooked up with Roz. <laughs> we should I mean, yeah, but realistically, guys, like, I'm not leaving the cave, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to be chilling in there. Like, you would just stay in there? No, yeah, why not? No, that thing you did. Is that what lords do to their ladies in the south? I don't know. <laughs> she didn't know about <laughs> it? <laughs> oh, the wild ones don't do that. <laughs> Maybe they're too dirty. <laughs> you were made. I was a man of the night. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were made. And what do you think? Who was he? Just a boy. He had red hair like me. It's by fire. The title. He was weak. Not like you. That was the first one. Then there was this then book. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I think I've heard it. <laughs> Let's get back. You don't have to. Like, you're in the wild. You can do what you want. Aren't they free folk? 
Yeah, he's like, we have to get back because we have a schedule. <laughs> I have to leave this nice, warm <laughs> cave with this naked girl and, <laughs> and go back out there. Because that's what I do. I'm John. Why, why would you leave? They're like warm in there. I don't ever want to leave this cave, John Snow. Oh, yeah. Man's Raider probably wants them for something. I'm sure I know the mission. Isn't the whole point that they don't bow to some king? They do what they want. I want my gold. Says it clearly right there on that note. You'll be repaid in full when the war's over. Piss on that. We're outlaws. Outlaws steal. You're lucky <laughs> we didn't kill you. Can't let him go. He's a murderer. He's guilty. Not in the eyes of God. But you can't. Enough. Judgment isn't ours to make. They like live to see another day. <laughs> Go in peace, Sandal again. Lord of Light isn't done with you yet. Oh. The rest of the show is about to be Arya trying to assassinate this man. <laughs> she like has the ultimate grudge. Right, she's gonna be trying to stick him every she's chance. She's tracking she gets. him. You're the Kingslayer. Pick him up, love. I mean, I hate you, Jamie, but I kind of feel bad for you, bro. You no, know, my lord, he has it here. <laughs> Find suitable rooms for our guests. Lord Bolton, is that worth from the capital? Stannis Baratheon laid siege to King's Landing. Oh, they didn't know. And your sister is alive and well. Your father's forces prevail. Why do you do that? Sir Jamie isn't well. Take him to Kyburn. Kyburn's that guy they picked up at Harrenhal. Right, exactly. I kind of like uh, this Bolton guy, though, because, you know, you know what I'm saying. He seems obviously. like he's about his business. He seems like a Tywin of the North. Well, you know, right. But he also seems to have some type of like honor to see like Rob did. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. I die. The corruption has spread. I fear it must be cut away. The safest course would be to take the whole arm off. And you'll die. You know, Maester. What's your chain? The Citadel stripped me of it. They For what? some of my experiments too bold. Mm. Experiments? I can leave your upper arm, make the cut at your elbow. I don't need my right hand to kill you. I can take away the rotting flesh and try and burn out the corruption with boiling wine. You'll need milk of the poppy. No milk of the poppy. Oh, Jamie's pain. that guy, huh? I'll scream. Quite a bit of pain. I'll scream loudly. <laughs> scream loudly, yeah. Gosh. Mm. So you that's ready? all he's gonna get is a little tourniquet on there, and then he's gonna sanitize it with boiling wine. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at his eyes. <laughs> they need to get him something to bite down on. I wonder if I might ask you for a favor. Of course, your grace. I have reason to believe that House Tyrell do not hold the crown's best interests at heart. I see. And have you shared these suspicions with Lord Tywin? My father's a practical man. He appreciates facts. I often find them a hindrance. And he appreciates <laughs> those who aid his family, as you well know. You have a good working relationship with the Tyrells. I thought you might look into it before you leave the capital. I shall do my best. And your best will prove better than when I asked you to locate Arya Stark. I assure you that it will. That wall is crazy with the So that just it. proved he didn't know Arya was there. Yeah, he didn't know. Wow. Thank you for seeing me, my lady. I had hoped we might discuss a few financial matters. I climbed all those steps to discuss financial matters. <laughs> <laughs> the royal wedding shaping up to be a very involved affair as master of coin it falls upon me to calculate the cost for the crown now it's a huge expense and we're at war lady olena oh i nearly forgot yes maintaining <laughs> supply lines I think how it slipped my mind so shut up and find that wedding <laughs> you don't have to lecture me about wartime expenses i'm quite familiar with and we are so grateful for your contributions <laughs> which are necessary for the preservation of the realm as is a royal wedding. The people are hungry for more than just food. They crave distractions. And if we don't provide them, they'll create their own. I didn't and think about that. distractions are likely to end with us being torn to pieces. A royal wedding is much safer and traditionally paid for by the royal family. That's what you call circular logic. But... <laughs> I was told you were drunk, impertinent, and thoroughly debauched. You can imagine my disappointment at finding nothing but a browbeaten bookkeeper. <laughs> We'll pay for half the expenses, and the celebrations will go on as planned. Is that sufficient? Quite sufficient. Thank you. Very good, then. That's settled. Good day. I love her. She's kind of I a think I love her. He was like, let me, let me learn some lessons from this lady. Lannisters wanted to kill me long before I joined the Brotherhood. You don't have to do this. I've served men my entire life. I served Master Martin, and he sold me to the Watch. I'm done serving. He's done. He but isn't he, like, it. 17 or something? <laughs> he may be their leader, but they chose him. These men are brothers, they're family. Aww. And as a bastard, he probably really Never wants that. Yeah, there you go. I can be your family. Aww. You wouldn't be my family, you'd be my lady. Oh, because she has more pull than him? She's still a highborn at the end of the day. Mm hmm And he would feel like he needs to answer to her. She's saying, in this society, I can't pull you down to me and I can't rise to you, so. Is this a rescue? That is our whoa, whoa. Oh my gosh. <gasps> 
so he just took his anger out on those kids that he has on Jamie. Now Rob's looking out disgusting, bro. I hate this, man. I cannot stand this. That's the Hang prisoners. them. Hang them. It doesn't matter, bro. You don't kill kids, man. You draw that line. Hang them. Car Stark, you gotta go. It took five of you to murder two unarmed squires. Not murder, your grace. Vengeance. Vengeance. Those boys didn't kill your sons. I saw Harry and I on the battlefield, and Torrance... Was strangled by the Kingslayer. They were his kids. They were boys! Look at them. Tell your mother to look at them. Slap them. She killed them as much as I. My mother had nothing to do with this. This was your treason. It's treason to free your enemies. In war, you kill your enemies. Did your father not teach her that boy? Please. Yes. That was a slow right, though. <laughs> Jeez, well, I'd have been like... <laughs> he had some armor on, okay? <laughs> Was to give me a scolding before he sets me free. Mm -mm. That's how he deals with treason. Oh, wow. A uh, king in the north, should I call him? The king who lost the north. Come on, Rob. We need a power move right here. Escort Lord Karstark to the dungeon. Hang the rest. Mercy, sire! I didn't kill anyone! I only watched for the guards! This one was only the watcher. Hang him last so he can watch the others die. Please. Tell him to bees. Yo, bro, you don't murder kids, man. Let the Lannisters do all that. Over here in the north, we ain't getting down like that. Yeah. Prove your point, Rob. Rob's freaking disgusted right now. This can't leave River Run. I don't like him. When Lannister's nephews, the Lannisters pay their debts. Oh, jeez. Stop talking about Would it. you make me a liar as well as a murderer? You will bury them and remain silent. Till the war is done. I'm not fighting for justice if I don't serve justice to murderers in my ranks, no matter how highborn. He has to die. Karstarks are Northmen. They won't forgive the killing of their lord. Your mother's right. If you do this, the Karstarks will abandon you. You tended to their wounds. Oh, you brought them supper. Now they're dead. And more boys will keep dying until this war is over. You need Karstark men to end it. Don't listen to it, Rob. Keep him as a hostage. Sometimes in life, man, you gotta just do the right thing and hope that it all works out. And that's what Rob's thinking. But Oh, what's he gonna do, though? He's gotta hang him. <laughs> cut, cut his head off. Rob's gonna do the right thing. This man's a child murderer. He has to go. I trust you, Tubies. I think you're yeah, gonna do what's yeah, right. Yeah, that's why I rock with you, Tubies. Because of the first men flows through my Veins as much as yours, boy. I fought the Mad King for your father. I fought Joffrey for you. That didn't stop you from betraying me, and it won't save you now. I don't want it to save me. I want it to hold you to the end oh, of your no. days. Who gives a shit? Kneel, my lord. Well, that's more Lannister people. They're gonna turn on Rob. <gasps> no way. Child murder. Rickard Caster, Lord of Carhold. Here in sight of gods and men, I sentence you to die. Would you speak a final word? Kill me and be cursed. You are no king of mine. So be it. I still trust you, TVs. I think you're gonna do what's right. He did do what's right. If you disagree with me, then feel free, but you don't kill children, bro. Let the Lannisters do that. Right, I'm saying in terms of the punishment, what was right. Right, yeah, yeah, that was right, that was right. Well, I feel like the debate's gonna rage in the comments. I can yeah. see it now. Get That's something. Sumerian. The Hound. You trying to kill some officials, my girl? Chill. What are you going to do with me? The first light will ride for River Run. Your brother's there now. They'll make a contribution to our cause, and you can go home. I'm a hostage, and you're selling me. Don't think of it that way. But it is that way. It is, and it isn't. More is than isn't. Farrah could murder your father a great deal, you know. Me too. wanted to refuse your ransom altogether. So why don't you? We need the gold. How many lives has he got, though? Like, will he come back again? Oh, bro. Catman. Do I frighten you, child? No. You're angry with me. Letting him go was the right thing. I thought he killed you. Toros, how many times have you brought me back? It's the Lord of Light brings you back. I'm just the lucky drunk who says the words. <laughs> how many times? Five, I think. Wow. Well, this makes six. Second time, I, every time I come back, I'm a bit less. Pieces of you get chipped away. Yeah, you got stabbed in like multiple... Could you bring back a man without a head? Not six times. Just once. I don't think it works that way, child. She's talking about her dad, right? I think so. He was a good man. Yeah. That's dark. He's at rest now, somewhere. I would never wish my life upon him. I would. You're alive. Protect me in the darkness. Use me as you will. I don't know this lady. For the night is dark and full of terrors. Annis. I have prayed day and night for you to come to me. Let's come sooner. The battle. I know of your troubles, my king. 
Lady Melisandre has told me everything. Yes, of course. Yeah, who is this high player right here? You mustn't despair. You are the one God's champion and the finest man I've ever known. Silly's a broken a sacred vow. You cheated? I've sinned. I have wronged you. You're doing God's work. Don't understand. This is a call. The Red Woman. The Lady Melisandre has told me everything. No act done in service of the Lord of Light can ever be a sin. Is this his wife? That's the vibe I'm getting, but he didn't even hug her or nothing. He slept with the red woman. That's a sin, right? Yeah. Because he was married. But he didn't even hug her. <gasps> what the? F Is that all her? She had a bunch of stillborns. That's her. She gave you a son. I gave you nothing. That's not true. So you've come to see her as well. There is no need. You must keep away from such distractions. She's my daughter. I want to see her. Who? So Working. he has no sons but a daughter. You don't need my permission. And she's here. So yeah, that's got to be his wife. Well, they live in a damn lair or something. They're weird. Whoa. You've grown since I last saw you. Mother said you fought in a battle. Did you win? No. Nope. Did the Onion Knight come back with you? He did. He fought bravely. He hasn't come to visit me. He won't be visiting, child. Why not? He's my friend. Look. He thinks he's... Oh, wait. He knows he's locked up. He locked him up, right? Yeah. <laughs> he made this for me. But don't tell Mother I have it. Sir Davos is a traitor. He's rotting in a dungeon cell for his crime. You're kind of a hard-ass, Dennis. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, you just pull up some teacups and stuff. Like, you barely see her. We can tell. And that's what you're going to drop her with? Not so hard. We'll scrub the skin off. What are you oh, doing? Oh, my lord. Here we go. <laughs> they probably haven't bathed in months, if you think about it. Like, a, over a year. It's been over a year. Well, they've had, like, rivers and stuff. But they're in, they there's were captured tub. for over a year, though, right? <laughs> this one suits me fine. <laughs> she said there's another tub. <laughs> Why is she so curled up? Because <laughs> she... I, I don't blame her. If I faint, pull me out. Why should I care how you die? You're supposed to get me to King's Landing in one piece. <laughs> Not <to> <laughs> I'm apologizing. I'm sick of fighting. Let's call a truce. You need trust to have a truce. There it is. That's the look. I've seen it for 17 years and face after face. You all despise me. <laughs> Kingslayer. Oathbreaker. You heard of wildfire? Of course. The Mad King was obsessed with it. He loved to watch people burn. He burned anyone who was against him. Before long, half the country was against him. Arrows of traitors everywhere. So he had his pyromancer place caches of wildfire all over the city. Oh my gosh. Beneath the sept of Baelor and the slums of Fleet Bottom under even beneath the Red Keep itself. The day of reckoning came. Robert Baratheon marched in the capital after his victory at the Trident. My father arrived first. The whole Lannister army at his back, promising to defend the city against the rebels. It's never been one to pick the losing side. I told the Mad King as much. I urged him to surrender peacefully. But the King didn't listen to me. But he did listen to Grand Maester Pycelle, Grace of the <laughs> But that's Cersei's like homie. <laughs> you can trust the Lannisters, he said. The Lannisters have always been true friends of the crown. We opened the gates and my father sacked the city. He came to the King, begging him to surrender. He told me to burn them all. Bring him my father's head. Mm -mm. Then he turned to his pyromancer. Burn them all, he said. Yeah, I remember. Tell me if your precious Randy commanded you to kill your own father and stand by while thousands of men, women, and children burned alive, would you have done it? Okay, I don't blame him now. But you've kept your oath then. Well, I've always been sympathetic for that. Like, he's done said that from the jump. I know, but I'm even more so now. Killed the pyromancer, and then when the king turned to flee, I drove my sword into his back. Burn them all, he kept saying. Burn them all. I don't think he expected to die. He, he meant to burn with the rest of us and rise again. Reborn as a dragon, turn his enemies to ash. Damn, he might have been. Well, for real. He slit his throat to make sure that didn't happen. Why didn't you tell Lord Stark? Stark, I think honorable Ned Stark wanted to hear my side. He judged me. The moment he said eyes on me. Because he's loyal, right? Oh no, he's he all about his But he was in rebellion. He was in rebellion, so. By what right does the both judge the lion? By what right? The king's lair! Damn, he's pissed. My name's Jamie. She didn't know the whole time? Well, she's just been calling him that, the Kingslayer, because that's what he is, but he's trying to say no, he's not. Oh, okay, I see. Princess. Gods, what are you doing here? 
he'll wake Bert. Bert? He's the fat one. He's on guard duty tonight. Go back to your room. You're not supposed to be here. If your father knew... You're a traitor. What's wrong Fine. with her? Like, what What does she have? Is she burnt? i your father and now I'm paying the price. I don't care. You're my friend. You must get bored down here. I brought you something to read. There's some lore about, like, people turning into, like, stone people, but I don't remember it. Thank you, my lady. I'm sure it's a fine book. My lady, I can't read the words. Oh. You can't? I'll teach you. I'll come when Bert's on duty and no, teach you. No, it's no, easy. No, no, it's so risky. Fun. What would they do? Lock us in cells? I wouldn't know where to start. At the beginning, and the title of the whole book is An History of Egon the Conqueror and His Conquest of Westeros. And that poor little girl just wants like a dad figure. Her dad, Loki's brainwashed and in a cult. And Davos is just like, seems like a good guy to me. You were first through the preacher, Pike. The second. Thoris of Mir went in alone, waving that flaming sword of his. <laughs> Thoris of Mir. Bloody madman. Robert knighted you after the battle. Proudest moment of my life. One knee in the dust. King's sword on my shoulder. All I could think of was how badly I had to piss. <laughs> <laughs> and full plate metal, 16 hours. Very nearly the first man knighted to piss on the king's boots. Wow. <laughs> I don't blame him. Oh, he's a good man. Great warrior. And a terrible king. I brought away my years fighting for terrible kings. Right, that's how I feel. The man of honor keeps his vows. Just once in my life before it's over. I want to know what it's like to serve with pride. Fight for someone I believe in. You believe in her? With all my heart. These the ones? Yes, Khaleesi, the officers. Gente jeve jerele e derebletas cogrondo jevo hedre. Damn. Oh, we got a leader. Oh, they chose a leader? That's really cool. Bro, he looks just like a manager I used to have. Yes, yes, like, just like him. What the heck? Torco nudo. Grey worm. Oh, grey worm. Torco. All unsolid boys are given you names when they are cut. Names that remind them what they are. Oh. Vermin. Dang. Let's go. All right, Grey Worm it is then. Robert wanted a dead. He's a Targaryen. The last Targaryen. There was no one on the small council could speak sense to him. I didn't sit on the small council. Wasn't the Lord Commander of the King's Guard traditionally? Traditionally, yes. I killed a dozen of Robert's friends during his rebellion. <laughs> True. Always hated the politics. I was spent jabbering about backstabbings and... You think he's paranoid that he knows? Um, that Selmy knows he was a spy for Varys. Yeah, she'll have to wade through that muck if she wants to rule the Seven Kingdoms. She'll have good men around her to advise her. Men with experience. The reputation of Westeros has suffered over the years. Sold men into slavery. I don't know if your presence by her side will help our cause when we go home. Our cause? Forgive me, Sir Barristan, but I was busy defending the Khaleesi against King Robert's assassins while you were still bowing to the man. We both want her to rule. You only joined us a few days ago. We will do whatever needs to be done, no matter the cost, no matter our pride. You're not Lord Commander here, and I take my orders from the Queen. <laughs> yeah, for real. You might outrank me there, but not here, boy. Yeah, I don't know, man. Jorah is definitely suspicious of him in some type of way. He like, why are be. you here? Yeah. Right. And I would definitely be paranoid because. We could ride north, take your land back from the Greyjoys, wait out the winter. Once my bannermen are home again, sitting by the fire, surrounded by their families, warm and safe, they'll never ride south again. When I gathered my lords together, we had a purpose. A mission now we're like a band of bickering children. Right. Give them a new purpose. I can't force them to meet us in the field. And I can't attack them where they're strongest. But I can attack them where they're not. And Castle Rock can't run away. Oh, because that's where Tywin's from. I'm going to take their home away from them. Can you do it? I need men to replace the Karstarks who marched home. And who are those men? One person in this kingdom with that kind of army who hasn't already sided with the Lannisters. Oh, where that bridge is at? The man whose daughter I was supposed No! To. You're not going to be able to! Water phrase old ass. He's Sorry gonna be cussing. like, he's gonna be like, no, bro. Like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah. And then what he sounds like, <laughs> kind of. It sounded like that. Do you have any idea when we might? I'll plant the seed as soon as Joffrey and I are married. Joffrey won't let me leave. He's got too many reasons to keep me here, and only one to let you go because it will please me. Well thought, sir. I should like to see you spar with a proper partner, <gasps> sir. Oh no! And Sansa's over here wanting to marry him. How did you know? No word. <laughs> He's probably a spy. Have you know I'm to be married soon, and even my intended hasn't the slightest notion. They rarely do, in my experience. You have a good deal of experience, do you? With the husbands. <laughs> what the heck? That didn't take long. Oh, it took long enough. <laughs> Seems our night of flowers is engaged to be wed. Who's the lucky girl? Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. I know. You may not be the grandest ship in the world, or the fastest. I've always wanted a ship. Once we get it, then we want something else. Your hair. It's different. Lady Marjorie wears it that way. Many ladies wear it. <laughs> I have good news. I'll be leaving the city soon. You still want me to come with you? It's not a question of what I want. You want to go home, don't you? 
Of course, more than anything. But maybe it would be better to wait. It's like dangerous to go there right now. I'm thinking how dangerous it would be. There you go. You've been so kind. I'd feel terrible if anything happened to you. I can't tell you how touched I am. <laughs> 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 I hope you know that I'm your friend, Sansa. Your true friend. I do, Lord Baelish. Peter. Peter. <laughs> if you wish to stay, then of course we'll stay. Is he going to use her to get to Catelyn? Nah, I think he's going to use her to get to her. Oh, lordy. So she's thinking it'd be better to wait until Marjorie like, released her, basically. Mm. To be safer. You'll be pleased to learn that after one conversation with Lana Tyrell, I've saved the crown hundreds of thousands on this wedding. Never mind that now. We have something important to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Saving money is important. Stop that. You're making me uncomfortable. Your sister has learned that your new friends, the Tyrells, are plotting to marry Sansa Stark to Sir Loras. Very well. She's a lovely girl. Missing some of Loras' favorite bits. Your jokes are not appreciated. It wasn't my best, but I thought... I bring them into the royal fold, and this is how they repay me, by trying to steal the key to the north. Sansa is the key to the north. I seem to remember she has an older brother. The car Starks have marched home. The young wolf has lost half his army. His days are numbered. Theon Greyjoy murdered both his brothers. That makes Sansa... Stark, the heir to Winterfell. And so you think? About to hand right. her over to the Tyrells. The Tyrell army is helping us to win this war. Do you really think it's wise to refuse them? There's nothing to refuse. This is a plot. Plots are not public knowledge. The Tyrells won't carry this one out until after Joffrey's wedding. We need to act first and kill this union in its crib. We find Sansa Stark a different husband. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> well, who's it going to be? She's insinuating it's about to be him. I already know. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> don't mean it. No I way. I do. Has made this poor girl's life miserable since the day he took her father's head. Now she's finally free of him and you give her to me? That's cruel. Even for you. You intend on <laughs> treating her? The girl's happiness is not my concern, nor should it be yours. She's a child. Oh, Shay's going to love this. You will wed her, bed her, and put a child in her. Surely you're capable of that. And if I refuse? You wanted to be rewarded for your valor in battle. Sansa Stark is a finer reward than you could ever dare hope for. <laughs> but she's like a human. And it is past time you were wed. I was wed. She doesn't get And she's a child. Too, right? She doesn't get a choice. Only too well. You should be thanking the gods for this. This is more than you deserve. <laughs> Tyrion will do as he's bid, as will you. Oh no. What do you mean? We all marry Sir Loras. <laughs> Bro, she's about to be so <laughs> miserable with him. <laughs> Tyrion will secure the north, you will secure the reach. No, I won't do it. Yes, you will. But Joffrey's marrying Marjorie. That's so weird. I am Queen Regent, not some brood man. You're my daughter! You will do as I command and you will marry Loras Tyrell. Put an end to the disgusting rumors about you once and for all. <laughs> for the legacy. Make me do it again, please. Not another word. My children. Yo, how much does Cersei hate this idea? The name for far too long. Enough to kill Tywin? I don't know. Because she really doesn't want to marry another Robert. You see her? She just don't want to get married off to someone again, anyone. She wants to choose. Boy, like, Robert was a drunk who abused her. This guy's gay. <laughs> so, like, you know what I'm saying? I know. Aww. Is this, uh, what's her name? Sh Shireen? Not that there's anything wrong being gay. There's not, but, you know, Cersei, she likes to, <laughs> she likes to get smacked up. You know what I'm saying? So that ain't gonna work. All right, uh, dude, honestly, that episode was freaking nuts, guys. The takeaway to me was, it's crazy that I think that Jamie is starting to develop a crush on Brienne. The thing I, the thing I didn't pick up was a crush. I think it just picked up that he confides in her because he's realized when he lost his hand, he lost everything. He lost all his dignity. He lost it all. So when he was confiding in Brienne, I think he was just realizing that there's more to life than just like all that nonsense that's kind of behind him. Yeah. And it's just unfortunate how like he has to explain the story, right? About why he murdered the Mad King. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's probably had to tell that story so many times that even if, you know, you had to be branded the Kingslayer, like how many times can you explain yourself until you just don't tell that story with a same amount of passion right you know what i mean like and that's you could just... tell he just had bad ptsd about it it was just something that really like really defined him from for he said 17 years and he's tired of it so maybe jamie i don't know how much jamie talked to joffrey but you know what i'm saying jamie hated ned stark so i can definitely see why joffrey could be so quick to just well he said he on. was honorable but he didn't like him because he's a start well he's honorable because he judged him for being a kingslayer and like he's saying that honor is to ned meant you know doing your duty by the book but by the book is you know it's a right. gray world you yeah know, it's not a black it's world. a 
it's it's a great so. area. It's not Absolutely. black and white. But we're gonna you wanna talk about all the stuff. Our- we'll okay. just pause and then we're gonna just write some little things down, guys. As you start the episode, we just want to be more organized. All right, guys. So we are Batman. We got our thoughts together a little bit on paper. Uh, wrote down some questions here. So one, baby, you wanna read this to it? You're yeah. a little better at presenting. So than me. so of course we wrote in this episode. We just wrote a note because we wanted to mention that the guy Barrick Dondarian, the one that Bruz brought back to life, we noticed his sword was on fire. And remember, Melisandre was given Stannis all that nonsense about like he's the Lord of the Light. I mean, he's the prince or something like that. He pulls this sword out, and remember, he pulls the sword out, no fire. Right. So it's like I don't know if Melisandre's willing to smoke up Stannis's butt right now. It's weird, man. That because what if that guy is... really is the prince? Right. Because well, he he's just been came brought out back nowhere, to right? life. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how many times has it been? Six or seven? Yeah. And like, so this guy, the point of him was Ned told him to go kill the mountain. Right. But he never did it because like he obviously keeps getting killed or whatever. Right. So basically, he's just trying to fulfill what Ned told him to do, and he was going to do it in Robert Baratheon's name. I remember that. But why is the Lord of the Light bringing him back? Do we know that yet? No. Okay. Well, it's not spent too much time on it okay so basically that was just important because like we noticed that and so it's kind of like makes me feel like a stannis really like what he is we were we noticed like jorah and selmy were having like a conversation and it was kind of hinting at that yeah does selmy know that jorah used to be a spy guy right that's something that we need to see so that makes me stressed out anytime they're in a room together that definitely has me a little bit on eggshells because so we'll it's see like, more how that. did selmy get there and why you right. know well he's an outcast and i guess since he originally served the targaryens he thought you know what i'm outcast from um, Westeros, I'm gonna go to Essos. Then I guess he just came across the only thing really going down over there, which is Daenerys. <laughs> right. I guess so. What else? Um, we just talked about it a little bit, but Jamie Lannister is the honorable. Like after that story, what is the, what is our opinions on him after that story? Well, he's in a state of like shock still. You know, he just went through so much brutal pain. So we're gonna have to let his character get used to the idea of not having a hand. Once right. he becomes who he's gonna be, now that he is essentially a cripple in a way, mm-hmm. then I guess he's gonna develop a new personality. I don't really think we've gotten there yet. So right. we'll see. And then we basically found out that Rob's next move is he's going to take Casterly Rock. But to get to Casterly Rock, he has to go through the phrase. Right. So he's got to go tell Mr. Frey that I'm not going to marry your daughter because she's got horse action going on. So <laughs> actually, I'm going to marry this woman. He's kind of seemed like a like a grungy dude, man. So he's probably not going to be happy about it. Right. And but can I still pass? Like, I'll, even though, like, I'll, I'll, despite all that, can I still use your bridge and pass? Like, right, go absolutely. win this war? I don't know how that's so I don't know what out. this dude's about to ask of Rob now, but I'm pretty sure that he's probably going to let him right but the leverage that he's going to put on rob is going to be so strong like a detrimental thing like something that could like break him maybe he might ask for his mom's hand in marriage or something oh oh my god uh, that'd be weird that's crazy maybe someone will have to get guys the biggest them. point of this episode to me before we get into the next one was rob had a decision to make i don't i don't remember the man's name but he wanted vengeance he came in and he killed rickard the lannister boys Car Starks. rickard car Stark, right and rob said you know what you're a child murderer you have to die for your sins you betrayed me you betrayed what our mission is about our mission isn't about the murdering of children it's about trying to win a war but what what good is to win a war and seize land if we're going to be unhonorable men just right. like what he perceived the lannisters to be so he had a moral dilemma to make sometimes life's tough like that man sometimes what's best for you isn't always the right moral thing to do it's really difficult you know we have to face this in a real life life and i feel like you know in rob's situation i feel like you cut the man's head off you send a message we're not going to murder children uh the same reason that you don't want sansa to be murdered you don't want them to murder Arya. if they're going to murder Arya, they're going to murder Arya. but right. you don't have to choose to act like a lannister and i think that's why you know rob seems to be the moral compass of this episode and i think sometimes in life man when you you know you're stuck with two wrong choices or two terrible choices at the end of the day you just got to do what you think is the best thing morally because you just do do the best thing do the best you can do to be on the right side of history and then just let the pieces fall right. where they may and so. everyone told him to do the opposite but he still chose that so rob knows he's gonna die anyway so does he want to die a child murderer or not okay so the next thing i wrote was little finger in his plan with sansa which are kind of you know he has an idea and i have an idea i'm not really sure whose idea is right his idea is he actually wants to get with sansa my idea is he wants to get to catlin somehow through sansa i don't know yeah i don't really know exactly what his plans are but i don't know man little finger is a very sneaky character and he has a lot of ambition and whatever he's planning ultimately is going to end with him wanting to be in charge of things because right. he's already made it very obvious that's his ambition uh you ready to get into the next episode yep let's go it's the climb i was gonna say that too really but you weren't about to sing it like me yeah i wasn't gonna sing it i'll be mind blown if i was aria (laughs) i'll be like what yeah i'm sitting here with a legend (laughs) got too much wood in there the more wood the bigger the fire (laughs) it needs to breathe take off that big lock look at him being a manly man i guess she knows how to build a fire. That's one thing. You know your fires. I'm alive, ain't I? Someone built 
put your fires for you growing up? It doesn't get so cold down in the reach. In the reach? And they were servants, of course. I knew you were highborn. I found something at the fist of the first bed. <laughs> Buried Cash. treasure. What does it do? I'm not sure that it does anything. It's beautiful, though, isn't it? I mean, that's a cool find. I know. How much longer? Not so far. A few more days. Is the wall as big as they say? Bigger? So big. You can't even see the top sometimes. It's hidden in clouds. You're playing with me. I'm not. 700 feet high, all made of ice. On a warm day, you can see it weeping. Oh, wow. <laughs> Castle Black is nice enough. It sucks. They keep <laughs> a fire burning. It's better than Craster's house. <laughs> day and night. Sometimes one of the brothers will sing. Do you sing? No, 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 no. Not very well. Sing me a song. Oh, all right. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> Easy to convince. <laughs> A father's face is stern and strong. <laughs> he sits and judges right from wrong. He weighs our lives the short and long. I thought he was about to sound like Louis Capaldi up in here. The mother gives the gift of Oh, he put the baby to sleep. And watches over every wife. Does she like it? Is this a date? It's better than your dad singing to you. Oh my god. This is some Red Dead Redemption stuff right here. If I had a bow, I could have shot a dozen rabbits. Well, I made this by myself. Guess you don't learn how to do that north of the wall. You learn how to use your fists, though. Oh, you're going to punch the rabbits to death? I had someone else in mind. Well, someone else is sitting right here. You're both very good at skinning rabbits. Some of us are just a little better. Well, some of us would say thank you when someone else hunts down their breakfast for them. Why don't they teach you to say thank you north of the wall? You've got a big mouth, girl. And too many teeth. <laughs> Lady Reed has got a stick so far up her ass it's a wonder her feet touch the ground. You've been nasty <laughs> to her every day. Of course she's nasty back. Me? We can't fight each other. We'll never make it to the wall. I want you both to make peace. Yes, little lord. Whatever you say, little lord. Your way of skinning rabbits is quicker than mine. I said so, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> You're a good little hunter. <laughs> Thank you. I'm right here with you. I'm right here with you. The visions take their toll. Having one now. Well, those visions better be worth it. I know. They take a toll on your life, boy. You better help Rob Stark win this war somehow. I saw Jon Snow. At Castle Black? He was on the wrong side of the wall, <sighs> surrounded by enemies. Was that before? Oh, it's happening now. He sees what's happening now, right? Or what's gonna happen? He was working, so I guess he was a bird and he just saw him right here. You ever climbed it before? No, but Tolman's done it half a hundred times. So 50. Well, I'm Jon Snow. I've killed dead men and Corrin Afan, but I'm scared of naked girls. I seemed scared the other day. <laughs> you were trembling like a leaf. It was you cold in that cave, okay? And don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Do you think I'm as dumb as all those girls in silk dresses you knew growing up? You didn't stop being a crow the day you walked into Mance Raider's tent. Oh, so she thinks he's still a crow. Well, I'm your woman now, Jon Snow. You're going to be loyal. To your woman. The Night's Watch don't care if you live or die. Man's Raider don't care if I live or die. We're just soldiers in their armies and there's plenty more to carry on if we go down. So what you trying to say? You only have each other? Well, it's you and me. Don't ever betray me. Because I'll cut your pretty cock right off and wear it round me neck. <laughs> <laughs> she's so vulgar. <laughs> it's funny though because she's a wildling. Right. <laughs> and if you fall... Don't scream. You don't want that to be the last thing she remembers. <laughs> <laughs> He's hell on wheels. Yeah, that is hell on wheels. You're not as good as you think you are. Face, oh. tits, balls. I hit him right where I wanted to. Right. She's been hanging out with boys too much. <laughs> you won't be fighting straw men, little lady. Show me a position. She said get in the pocket. Keep your elbow high. Never hold. Your muscles tense up when you hold. Pull the string back to the center of your chin and release. But I have to aim. Never aim. Never aim. Your eye knows when it wants the adder to go. There's someone out there. Who is that? That looks like Jackin because of the hood. That's about far enough. Every encounter is so hostile because someone threatens someone. Oh, boy. Pardon me, lady. We'll be the judge of that. Valar Morgulis. Valar the Irish. You're not going I don't see many ladies these days. That dude looks like a can opener guy. Hell, don't it? How many times has the Lord brought him back? Six. 
Que si son ravis y tilibus da or. Oh, don't I mourn thee, oh. <laughs> I've always been a terrible priest. Drank too much rum. It's a terrible thing to say. By the time I came to Westeros, I didn't believe in our Lord. So I wore the robes, and every now and then I'd recite the prayers. It's just for sure. Until the mountain drove a lance through this one's heart. That's the old words. Not because I believed in them, but he was my friend, and he was dead. He got desperate. Any words on you. And for the first time in my life, the Lord replied. And then five more times. Beric's eyes open. And I knew the truth. Our God is the one true God, and all men must serve him. You've been to the other side. The other side. There is no other side. I have been to the darkness, my lady. He sent you to us for a reason. You have someone he needs. Yeah, nothing tricky about it. Just need decent steel. Get you the steel. <laughs> Man's got a job. Let's go. I didn't like that woman. <laughs> That's because you're a girl. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Forgive me, lad. Forgive me, lad. What are you doing? <laughs> Let go of him. What are they doing with She him? told Stannis her he blood was in someone else. His blood was in someone else. Gendry. Right. Did the Lord of Light tell you that or did she? You're not doing this for your god. You're doing it for gold. We're doing it for both, girl. And we can't get weapons and horses and fruit that gold. You told me this was a brotherhood. Aww. You told me I could be one of you. They could have left. Are they going to burn him? They better not. Yeah, he thought he was about to have a career path. You are more than they can ever be. You will make kings rise and fall. How? By burning to death? You're a witch. You're going to hurt him. I see a darkness in you. <laughs> and in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. Eyes you'll shut forever. Brad have been so damn confused. So she's going to kill people with that eye color? Why even speculate at this point? I have no clue. <laughs> so he has done this 50 times. This is crazy. That is so scary. <laughs> You're staring at me, ass, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to hit Jon Snow in the head. Oh my oh. god, it did. You all right? Just seeing if you can take a hit, lad. Nope. <laughs> He's too much. <laughs> he was so stressed in that situation, that guy had to say something goofy. Oh no. Sorry, were you sleeping? <laughs> uh. He's not nice anymore. I don't like him now. Whoa. He's like, thought Whoa. you had a friend, boy. <laughs> Water. Oh my gosh. I wish I had some for you. Rude. Oh my gosh. Well, let's play a game. Which body part do you need the least? You've already told me everything. Remember? Your daddy was mean to you. Darks didn't appreciate you. Oh my gosh. Stark boys. They're still alive. You failed, but I'm a better hunter than you. <gasps> no shot. He's trying to get them? How about your little finger? You don't use that for much, do you? No? For why? You said you got everything you needed. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this happen to him. You've been wondering why you're here, haven't you? Well, yeah. Why I'm doing this to you. So guess. If you guess right, I'll tell you. By the old gods and the new, I swear it. Something tells me you don't believe that. So he's a northerner because he said that, right? Right. If I win, he'll let me go. I don't trust him. Do you think this has a happy ending? You haven't been paying attention. That was so evil. You first. Bro, if Theon ever gets out of those chains, that boy better watch his back. No. Too vague. Deepwood Mott. Terrible guess. That's where you told him. That's where you told him you were. Now, where? Blast earth. <laughs> Do I look like a fucking umber to you? Oh, he's making him guess like his house? <laughs> I'm not wincing at the TV, guys. I'm wincing because she's squeezing my finger oh, sorry. and pinching it. He Dude. looks like House Baggins. House Baggins. Did you see any banners flying when we came in? It was just a guess. Very good, Lord Theon. And who am I? Torrin cast up. <gasps> He's dead. dead. Strangled by the Kingslayer. He was your brother. No shot. So his dad's dead your too. Your father. This Lord Rickard cast up. <sighs> Is it? I betrayed Rob. So now he's torturing That's Theon. That's why you're torturing me. Yes. But Rob didn't tell you to do it. Well, that makes sense, though. You win. Yeah, because Rob wouldn't condone this. Rob no. would just kill him. He told that off. guy that he doesn't. He rules that out. The Vladimir guy. You forgot to ask if I'm a liar. Why would he ask that? What in the hell? Oh my God, this guy. Ooh. I win. Right. Thank you for riding here so quickly. I don't like him. That dude was crazy. I thought he was so nice at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> We're idiots. So wrong. Our fathers instructed us to tell you that his alliance with the North can continue if his terms are met. Lord Frey requires a formal apology for your violation of your sacred oath to marry one of his daughters. Easy. Of course, he deserves as much. I was in the wrong. There's restitution for this betrayal. He demands Harrenhal and all its attendant lands. Easy. I don't think that's we are fighting for the North. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shut Our up, Lord idiot. It is his. Once the war is over. And there's something else. We will do whatever we can to give Lord Frey what he needs. Not what. Whom. Oh, no. Who? That dude. <laughs> okay, done. Easy. Uh, 
No. Oh. Your father requires Lord Edmure to wed one of his daughters. Yeah, you're gonna give up Heron Hall, but not you. Oh. Crazy. But I see her first. You want to oh. count her teeth? We depart for the twins in the morning. <laughs> you need an answer before we leave. The wedding not more than a fortnight thereafter, or this alliance is at an end. Your father does realize we're in the middle of a war. Father is old. Oh. <laughs> Would put his heart at peace if you could see her wed to a good husband. He has every right to be. <laughs> Dang, wrong. Yeah, marry that guy off anyways. He's just kind of, you know, there. All right, let's talk about it, guys. Do you take this guy's help or not? What do you do? It's not help. It's to make peace. Well, so you can go take Casterly Rock. Well, but essentially, they need his help. They need his help by letting him cross that bridge yeah i marry that guy off that guy's just been making smart remarks At very least i should be offered the same choice you have i'm his liege lord he's a proud man and we've wounded him i didn't wound him right you did my answer is no here we go listen to me and listen very carefully you the are... laws of gods and men are very clear no man can compel another man to marry the laws of my fist are about to compel your t oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you refuse our alliance with the phrase is dead he's wanted me for one of his daughters since i was 12. when i say no you will come back me a daughter of my choosing i have a war to fight we can't win it without them you said you wanted to make amends for the stone mill <laughs> yeah doing too much over there <laughs> i had something less permanent in mind <laughs> <laughs> I've won every battle, but I'm losing this war. I am acting on Lady Stark's orders. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he dress her like that? I don't know. <laughs> if Just pick it up with one hand, Jamie. Hanged her for treason. <laughs> Teamwork. I should send you back to Rob Stark. <laughs> you should. That you're sitting here watching me fail at dinner. <laughs> Why might that be? Wars cost money. Many people would pay a great deal for you. We both know who would pay the most. Tywin. I'll make you pay the most. We found out you'd captured me. Send me back up north. For yeah, y'all better give Tywin a freaking discount. You're right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the safest thing to do is to kill you both and burn your bodies. King Rob is keeping your father quite busy. He doesn't have time for anything else. He'll make time for you. I will allow you to go to King's Landing as restitution for the mistakes my soldiers made. Yeah, he's scared of Tywin. And you will swear to tell your father the truth, that I had nothing to do with your maiming. He's trying to just save himself, so he's, he's betraying scared. Rob, Loki. Because he thinks that Rob's going to lose the war. You understand how suspicious that is to ordinary people. I know, like, you're not going to drink that wine, but in King's Landing, they poison anyone. <laughs> if you're Jamie, you ain't got to worry about being poisoned. If you want you dead, he'll kill you. Oh, she won't be going with you. Um, why? I'm charged with bringing Sir Jamie to You are charged with abetting treason. Afraid I must insist. You're in no place to insist on anything. I would have hoped you'd learned your lesson about overplaying your position. Impossible. My grandson is the pride of High Garden, the most desirable bachelor in all seven kingdoms. <laughs> your daughter is rich, the most beautiful woman in all seven kingdoms, and the mother of the king. Old. <laughs> Old? Old. I'm something of an expert on the subject. You men may have a stomach for bloodshed and slaughter, but this is another matter entirely. Oh, babies. She can't have no more kids, probably. My stomach remains quite strong. The only thing that might turn it are details of your grandson's nocturnal activities. <laughs> <laughs> you deny them. Oh, not at all. <laughs> a sword swallower through and through. A sword but swallower. Affliction should be grateful for the opportunity to marry the most beautiful woman in the kingdoms and remove the stain from his name. Did you grow up with boy cousins, Lord Tywin? Of course. And you never... No. <laughs> Not one. Mm -mm. Not in any way? Never. I congratulate you upon your restraint. He didn't break <laughs> eye contact. Did you see that? Yeah. Perhaps High Garden has a high tolerance for unnatural behavior. Brothers and sisters. Oh. Where I come from. That stain would be very difficult to wash out. I will not breathe further life into a malicious lie by discussing it. She just gave it back. He gave it and she gave it back. Yeah, and she ain't wrong. Convincing enough to put swords in their hands and send them off to kill Lannisters and Tyrells, thanks to our new affiliation. I don't <laughs> care what people believe, and neither... <laughs> Do you now if the rumors about my children were true then joffrey is no king at all <laughs> ding, ding, ding. is throwing its prize flower into the dirt and if cersei is too old to give laura's children we are throwing another prize flower into the dirt it is a chance we simply cannot take if you refuse to marry loras to cersei i will name him to the king's guard oh no i'm sure you're familiar with the king's guard vows he will never marry the tyrell name will fade and high garden will go to the children of joffrey and marjorie you would have your grandson protected by someone who disgusts you i would have <laughs> my grandson protected by a skilled warrior who takes his vows seriously so 
Shall I draw up the order? This man's business, boy. Or do you consent to this match? It's a rare enough thing. A man who lives up to his reputation. Oh! Cersei Jr. No Yo, that conversation was like... That was intense. That two was like, goats in a room, right? right? Two legends, it seems. No. <laughs> More intense than this. <laughs> that would be so hard, dude. Especially just because the wind. What in the world? Oh my gosh. An avalanche? Is this whole wall about to come down? That was like six wildlings, wasn't it? Wow. <gasps> oh, she's on the string thing. Out. Yeah, but you saw what happened to Gwen Stacy. We gotta throw them loose! Nah, we gotta cut you loose. He said no. No, 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 no. The warg, the R or L? John, you better get that. What's he gonna do? You better start swinging. Dude. <gasps> the momentum. Oh, let's go, John. John, you strong as hell. That'd have broke my shoulder. <laughs> Just so you know, none of y'all could have done it. Good job, guys. Look, now you. this is going to be awkward. Why'd you make it awkward? I mean, it ain't his fault. He just didn't want to go down with him. He said, don't take it personal, Snow. <laughs> Had to cut you loose. Had to cut you loose, Snow. I'm very happy about... Uh, yes. Oh, so they don't know the new plan yet. I am as well. I feel like I'm in a dream. <laughs> Yes, me too. I have dreams of a large wedding since I was quite young. He's in a nightmare. <laughs> yes, food, the tournaments, and the bride, of course. <laughs> the most beautiful bride in the world. She's like, there you go. Have you ever been to High Garden, my lady? I'd never left Winterfell before I came to King's Landing, but it sounds wonderful. Oh. I can't wait to see it and to leave this place. They both agree it sucks. Yeah, I'm just tired of them. It's so beautiful prepared to Winterfell, but it's so like gross and corrupt. Suppose there's anything we can do about this? Father doesn't discriminate. We're all being shipped off to hell together. <laughs> a boat you built. Pyrells were plotting to undermine our family. I did what I did to protect our family. I'm your family who's actively contributed to that family's survival. <laughs> right. Whether or not you or father or anyone else wants to admit it. I do admit it. Finally. If it weren't for your trick with the wildfire, Stannis would have sacked the city before father got here. Yeah, but it's not just that. Our heads would still be rotting on the city gates. An odd way of saying thank you. Right. <laughs> did you or did you not order Sir Mandon to kill me during the Battle of the Blackwater? She did. So it was her Joffrey? And she, he was with Joffrey? He hates me because I'm the only one who tells him what he really is so fair enough he wants me dead but his stupidity he could have had me poison and no one would have known but the king orders a king's guard to murder the hand of the king in full view of his own army the boy's an idiot do you want me to say i want you to tell me if my life is still in danger probably but not from joffrey he won't do anything now father's here seven kingdoms united in fear of tyron lannister Joffrey will belong to Marjorie, the little doe-eyed whore. <laughs> History will be taken from our hands. You may escape at least. Once Jamie gets back, Dolores may come down with a terrible case of sword through bowels. When Jamie gets back, yes. When do we think that's going to be? He's out there somewhere. Do you think she's still going to like Jamie like that? Yeah. Do you think people will like it? I don't think they will even notice it. Anyway, from what I can tell, the dressmakers in Highgarden will be far superior to the ones in King's Landing. They never make me anything as dull as this for my wedding. Will they let me invite my family? They haven't asked my opinion. Oh, well, they might, so they can get their heads. <laughs> Good afternoon, Lord Tyrion. I was just trying on a gown for King Joffrey's wedding. Yes, it should be quite a wedding. <laughs> he has to speak with fund you. it. Alone, if I may. Yeah, away from Shay. Speak to her alone. Shay. Please excuse her, Lord Tyrion. She's not from here, but I trust her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she doesn't know, right? Yeah. That's so funny. Sometimes we think we want to hear something, and it's only afterwards, when it's too late, that we realize we wished we'd heard it under entirely different circumstances. It's all right, really. <laughs> oh, this is going to be strange because Shay is a very hot headed. <laughs> right. A lot of secrets are about to come out. It's about to be good. This is awkward. <laughs> a thousand blades. There aren't a thousand blades. There aren't even two hundred. I've counted. Huh, I'm sure you have. His costumes are becoming more like extravagant, Lord Baelish. It is flattering. Really, you feeling such dread at the prospect of me getting what I want. When I thwarted your plan to give Sansa Stark to the Tyrell. But your confidant, the one who fed you information about my plans, you didn't bring her any enjoyment. She was a bad investment on my part. Roz. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who wanted to try something new, something daring, and he was so grateful to me for providing this fresh experience. 
experience. Bro, you're evil, little finger. I know. I did what I did for the good of the realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over. But it's really over 200. Till we forget that it's a lie. But what do we have left once we abandon the lie? Chaos. A gaping pit waiting to swallow us all. Chaos isn't a pit. It's a beginning Chaos or something? Chaos is a ladder. Oh, jeez. Mm. Him and his bow. climb it fail and never get to try again. It better not be Marjorie, boy. You better quit. <gasps> is that Roz? That's the end of her, bro. Oh my gosh, why? Because, man. Given a chance to climb, but they refuse. They cling to the realm. Oh. Um. Or the god, or love. Illusions. Only the ladder is real. The climb is all there is. So he tricked her into going. Because she's going to want to go now. She's going to want to go with little things. Hold on, let me now. pause it, everybody. Right. Well, no, I thought I thought that that boat has sailed. She just figured out that she just figured out that she's marrying Tyrion. Yeah, and I point. think I think Littlefinger did that so she'll want to go escape with him. Ooh, I thought Varys spoiled the plans. Littlefinger just said he just tricked he just tricked them. I thought Littlefinger's plans all along was to try to like rescue Sansa so that way he could marry her, quote unquote, because she's like young and of age now. So that way he could like gain power and favor. Right, but he told them he told them about the plan because he heard it from someone or something like that because Varys and Elena were talking right and he heard about the plan and then when he told him about the plan that's when Tywin did that and then that's only going to help him I think it's a double manipulation I see what you're saying yeah because he saw her crying looking at the ship yeah I mean that was like she was longing for it I was right. thinking I'll even marry Littlefinger just get me out of here whoa she finally sees it huh that's so crazy. That land kind of sucks, doesn't it? I wouldn't want to be free folks down there. I'd stay in that case so long I start looking like Gollum. Whoa. Metaphorically, he's showing her like a whole new world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting from it. <laughs> And he's like low-key giving in to her now. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's like his first girlfriend. She could have been a horse and he's going to give in to her. She could have been a white walker. He'd be out there chasing her around. Dang, what a romantic spot to kiss someone though, right? Right. But my thing is, is he going to go back? Because I feel like he's manipulating them. Crazy, guys. Insane. Man, I'm really getting into this show, man. Yeah. Crazy. This show is starting to advance like freaking right. crazy. We left off on the wall. So John obviously is developing a lot of feelings for this girl, mm -hmm. man. Uh I don't know if John's secretly a wildling at heart. Maybe John's just having an identity crisis, you know, right. because he has been a bastard. So right, and he feels like maybe he's kind of like free now. He doesn't have to answer to people like he had to answer to the Starks. He had to answer to the Night's Watch. Well, what was you saying <laughs> at the end of the episode about he's manipulating? Like so to get south. I thought his mission was to like do like I thought the whole mission for him going out there was to like infiltrate the wildlings because like. For something. I don't remember what. Maybe to well, find his uncle. I thought he was looking for his uncle the whole time. Right. And plus he was supposed to, they're supposed to preemptively attack them because they were playing on Marshall on the wall. They didn't want oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. But then now he kind of like. Yeah, he got stuck out there. Right. And now he kind of seems like he's stuck, but he's like kind of confiding, which, but she made this comment. I'm still, a, you're still a crow. So like, I think she's kind of thinking when they made it up the wall, he was going to side with them. Which also goes to indicate how much John just has an identity crisis because like, is he a crow? But he's not a crow. He's not a wildling, but, he's, but isn't he is. Isn't he still wearing his crow stuff, though? But he's not a wildling, but he's not a crow either. Right. Because, you know, when he said that the problem was, I saw, we come from a place of leadership structure, right? And you don't question those uh, structures. But right. the problem is the ones in charge are giving babies to White Walkers. So, therefore, everything you've ever believed about honor, integrity, blah, 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 the Night's Watch, it all just went out the window. Right. Right. And so, John is just in a place of just... He just has he has an identity crisis and right. the first person who's showing him some love you know what i'm saying and he's just falling and when you're it. young too like you you know oh, your, yeah, your mind's warped just, by yeah. by any type of new love or anything like that right um i guess i guess also something else that was important was um melisandre made it to thoros and dendorian right and that was going yeah and that is just some more because she her last thing was Stannis was trying to be like, hey, girl, let's make a baby. And she was like, um, no, you're not strong enough. But someone of your blood is strong enough. and I'm going to go find them. And now she has Gendry. That whole storyline, guys, I'll be honest with you, man. It's not that I'm not following it. Like, I'm following. I feel like I know about as much as I should know at this point. But it's just really hard to follow. Right. Right. Because I just don't know. Like, I think there's like a whole prophecy know, around it, which maybe like the next lore will explain to us. Because, you know, this lore explained a lot to us. So, but there, it seems like there's a prophecy and it seems like Melisandre is buying into that prophecy so hard. And 
I'm starting to believe like I didn't believe in the magic too much like I did other than the baby that happened. I thought it was like more dark magic, but this guy coming back multiple times is kind of telling me it's like there might be some good to it. Well, I've seen men that could change their face. And that's when I really started believing in the magic, right? And I saw a woman walk into fire and right out of that miracle came three dragons whose yeah. eggs were basically unfertile and they she went in that fire and fertilized them eggs man so there's definitely a lot of soft magic in this series that's what somebody told me in the comment section uh it's called soft magic and a lot of fantasies have it because it's a way of like tying up these and cues like i get it what else baby okay um i don't just let me say guys i don't like to dive too much into the red woman and the word of light and all that uh, i like to speculate on it a little bit but i feel like that part of the story there's just so much going on there, and obviously a greater brain than me put this all together. So I don't want to speculate on it too much because I just know I'm going to be really off, and I don't yeah. feel like the story's really told me enough to even like start questioning too much. Exactly. About it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, can I mean, use if we my make brain. up questions, it would be like out of the blue. Like I have no knowledge. Like it would just be like out of the nowhere. Questions. I could put myself in. You know, me and you could get together and we could get on a council and we could discuss plans for Rob Stark. Right. We could join the we we could join the cause and we could have conversations for hours but when it comes to this red woman thing i'm just lost i don't right. know what to say about that so what else? that's magic and that's like you know we talked right. about that we're, we're we're working on understanding that theon we're talking about theon now. the best part of the storyline right now to me is the theon part i mean that's not true guys obviously the war with rob and the lannisters is the most important storyline to me and i'm really loving the merit like how everything's going to shape up for the next thousand year dynasty that's about to come into play basically right right all this is going to change it all this the, the result of this war but dude the dirty little secret bro is i'm secretly super enjoying this crazy looking smacked out looking dude man the car start kid well he said he was a car start but then he said i'm a liar and then he, yeah so we don't we don't 100 percent know who that guy is yet but the one thing we do know about this guy is he's insane he's a liar and he's, he's like he's, a, he's an admitted liar um because the most cold thing i've seen is when he told you even quoted this too when he said that the saddest thing was watching lord balon's last son ride off yeah and this and man thought, don't care theon Greyjoy, <laughs> the last living son of balon Greyjoy. yeah and it's like this man does not care about that at all right he's evil um something i did want to note about this episode though is and this is like just me noticing and i'm sorry it's probably because i'm a girl and bring it on sexist comments i don't really care but i did notice all the women in this episode they kind of had no choice to who they got to marry like sansa was thinking she's gonna marry loris last minute situation she marries Tyrion. she none of her parents are even there she's property of someone else but when it came to edmer tolly which was the guy who is marrying like uh, Walter Frey. I don't know which daughter. I forgot what her name was, mm -hmm. but he's he's going to have to marry her. He literally said there's no law that commits comply makes a man comply to marriage. So my thing is that I just noticed in this universe is that women, they kind of get like you go here, you go here, Cersei, you go here. If this benefits the realm here, you go here. I don't really care. But for a man, it's not so easy. So Edmund totally could have like he could say no basically right well the reason he could say no is because at the end of the day if he decides not to he can pick up a sword right and i guess as a woman you can do the same but they just choose not to do i mean yeah you're right there's definitely no choice so there's definitely a power structure the men are in charge the men are in charge because at the end of the day they carry the sword you know what i mean so it's obviously a world and the most violent clan wins right i mean it's right. the game of thrones so women definitely fall on that you know what i'm saying so they definitely fall below the men but what that goes to show me is it's not really so much that women particularly don't have a choice. It's more that like just whoever's in charge ultimately holds the power in this society. And mm -hmm. women ultimately just don't hold a lot of power because there's not a lot of violence that comes with them, basically. Right. So, so basically in this universe, when you have a son, you're like, ooh, powerful. But when you have a daughter, it's like that's going to kind of mend like uh, something that will benefit your house. Right. Like when you have a daughter, it's kind of like a reward. You're kind of like, great. This is going to benefit me somehow. Right. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it'll benefit. Like, so, like, the son is to carry on the birth name, and the women, the the daughter is for the the furthering of, like, the house. And, like, right. setting up your house. So, the, the daughter is used for politics. The son is used for... And having the children, of course. Right. Because like, th that makes your house But, I mean, stronger. what other reality could we possibly bake up, right? I mean, right. like, we couldn't really have a show where all the women are running around beating the hell out of the men with the mm. sword. You know what I'm saying? That would just be kind of goofy. So, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative. I'm, I'm being neutral about it. I'm just making a note that the men, obviously, in this, in this show, have like, you know, they can say no. But even Rob, man, the leader of a great army, at the end of the day, man, like, 
he he got to say no, but did he really get to say no? Right. Like, that's he didn't get he to didn't say really. no with no consequence because right. at the end of the day, the power structure, he's below on the power structure. And that kind of so. like goes back to oaths. Like how, like what oaths can you break? Like Rob Stark broke the biggest oath, which is he, the reason why it's the biggest oath is because he's the king of the right. North. So when, him breaking that oath, you know, and Catelyn said it too, when you break your oath, so do your men. Right. Absolutely. So well, there's truth to that. So if, if he breaks his oath, then his is that his uncle Edmer? Right. Um, why would, why shouldn't he? Well, you know, babe, the reason that I think it's so great that you just brought that up is because it doesn't really have much to do with like sexism or anything like that, guys. So if that's how you're interpreting, it, I'm you know I'm pretty sure that that's not what you're saying. Absolutely, I not. think what you're trying to say is Littlefinger and Littlefinger said it best when him and Barris was having the conversation. He said, "This is basically everything is basically smoke and mirrors," and he goes, "Okay, well." Even though it's smoke and mirrors, if we don't continue to play the game, what do right. we have? Chaos? Right. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, Littlefinger goes into the, well, out of chaos is born great men, and it's an opportunity. It's a ladder. Right. But basically, like, this show has a good way of showing that even, like, the way women don't have a choice to marry, like, it just really goes to show that every single thing that holds this society together is just glass. And it's glass waiting to shatter. Right. Because every concept that you think of, ultimately, doesn't make sense if you logically think about it. You right. get what I'm trying to say? And you going with that, you can kind of see like with the new generation, how they're like taught like the old thing. They're like, you have to learn all these things from the past over and over and over. So even if it might not be smoke and mirror sometimes, but they are kind of growing up knowing these stories. So like when you bring these families together, they only know all this stuff that they've learned. And obviously the things they've learned are not true. Right. Yeah. So like a thousand swords, there's really 200 little finger discounted. Yeah. Even like even the greatest like representation of like the power of westeros is the iron throne i mean it's yeah. the ultimate symbol and even that is just a ginormous exaggeration exaggeration yeah yeah a huge one um and as you can see women can come to power in the show cersei i guess cersei did because of like birthright though per se but, but not at all because tywin just said yo you're marrying loris don't want to hear it from you she could just kill tywin she could poison tywin I don't, I don't that's what I'm saying like Cersei Cersei breaks the mold because she's a woman but she just she walks around and just demands power I, mean, I think I think if anyone breaks that mold it's Daenerys well obviously she'll break that mold right she's breaking the mold because she's got three dragons behind her yeah and she if you're gonna tell Daenerys to marry someone she'll probably be like okay Dracarys I don't want to hear it right which is kind of tyrannical in a way which uh, I mean she could not do that I'm not saying she's gonna do that I'm saying she could, you know, but I'm saying but she, she only she don't have to marry who she doesn't want to because she's a queen. You know what I'm saying? She's right. Those the two men that are around her are her assistants. I really hope that this show doesn't end with some type of democracy kicking in or something, because basically the more I try to figure the show out, the more I try to put it together and make some type of like sense out of it. The more I realize that I think the point of this show is we live in a universe where everything's sort of revolves around this iron throne and the the fake illusion of power that comes with it and it's all it's all just right because if you think about it it's joffrey's the leader and if you look at joffrey he's literally giggling about like targaryen like people being dead yeah okay let's let's talk about what's next let's talk about so for rob for rob to we already talked about it he has to have an apology they give up heron hall which he doesn't even have control over so i don't mm. know why that was important but edmer has to marry that person we talked about that Okay, you want to talk about Tywin and Olena's conversation? Just like kind of how like freaking ice cold goaded that was? Yeah, I mean, basically, we're just at a point where I don't really know how Tywin feels about her, though. I don't know if he feels the same way that Cersei does. Cersei looks at her as a threat. I'm sure she, right. she'd have her head. Yeah. Honestly. Like, she wants that whole family to pack up and leave. She's not thinking about the war effort. Tywin's obviously more concerned about the war effort. Um, right. And I just think that I just need more of that conversation. When Marjorie, when Marjorie kind of like, you know, started manipulating Joffrey, which now that I just saw what Joffrey did to Roz, I don't think Marjorie's manipulating Joffrey anymore. I think Joffrey wants to do whatever Joffrey wants to do. Well, see, that was the problem with that whole thing from the beginning was Joffrey's whole character arc to me was someone I thought the whole point of him completely doing Sansa like that was to show that he's just above any of that. Like in right. his mind, he's the king. And, you know, the moment he became king, everyone became less than him. So, right. But I think when he got hit in the face with that cow patty, it was kind of like a recognition of like, yo, they don't really like me. So like when Marjorie was out here doing this honorable stuff, he's like, okay, like I need to follow her lead. So I don't get like 
killed in the streets. Well, there's two reactions, right? When right. someone hits you in the face with cow dung, bro, you either think to yourself, what did I do to deserve that? Or you think, okay, well, I'm going to hit you in the head with a brick, bro. You know what right. I'm saying? Joffrey doesn't really seem like the type to just self-reflect. I mean, right. that's what makes him Joffrey. He just says, like, he's like, Rawr. Yeah, so he went crossbow crazy. <laughs> right, yeah. And anyways, Roz, we had to lose in this episode, unfortunately. Unfortunately, guys, I could see that coming. I mean, yeah, Roz I, is like... When she was doing the behind-the-scenes stuff with Varys, and I knew Littlefinger was going to find out eventually, but I honestly, I didn't know he was going to hurt her. I mean, when he had that investment talk with her, we should have saw that coming. Well, the prostitute usually dies in the show, dude. Oh. I mean, I, they don't they, though? I mean, they right. really do. Just like when you look at, like, true crime stuff, the prostitute. That's just, like, rule 101, dude. The prostitute usually dies. Because they normally don't have, like, a family or anyone to, right. like, care if they go missing. And that's what I was saying. I think I mentioned it now that when we saw her die, that's what I thought. I think in a previous episode I'd mentioned, like, Ross needs to get out of there. Remember mm. me saying something well, along those lines? I think that's what she was trying to do. Remember, um... She started working for Varys, and Littlefinger was about to leave. So I think she was kind of thinking, like, I'm kind of good when he leaves. I'll be right. with Varys. And because Ver- remember, she, he said your profession. She said X profession. Something that this show's really shown me, though, as we've been watching it, is it's a very small world mm-hmm. in the show. Like, Ross, hypothetically, in real, like in our reality, right? She would just quit working for Littlefinger, disappear in the middle of the night, and then start a new life, right? Yeah. Which is what I was thinking, oh, Ross, you need to do. But I wasn't really thinking, like, this world is so small. There's just nowhere to go. Yeah, right. And I also, it's war like, times. Where is she going to go? Like, Win- Winterfell is really small. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Winterfell is one of the, like, what, six or seven places that we've right. actually learned about so far. And we're mm-hmm. in season three. So, this world is very small. And apparently, it's really undiscovered. Like, right. there's a lot of land that's, like, nothing. I guess the last thing we can talk about is that there's four weddings coming up. And what are they? Oh, man. So, um, Rob's cousin has to marry one of the rob's uncle yeah rob's uncle has to marry one of those girls she's 19 hopefully she's got at least 27 teeth that'd be good Mm -hmm. but uh Tyrion and sansa they have to marry and then cersei has to marry uh what's his name tyrell Mm -hmm. and then there's one more wedding i don't remember whose it is it was one that was always gonna happen oh joffrey and marjorie (laughs) Isn't Littlefinger supposed to marry someone? Oh, and Littlefinger's supposed to marry Liza Aaron. So there's five weddings coming up. Yeah. Not- well, I think Littlefinger's, though, I, I don't know if Liza knows. Like, I don't, no one's ever showed Liza getting the note that she has to marry Littlefinger. Right. And that goes to my thing. Doesn't Liza get a choice? She's like over there. Robin's, her son is the king at uh, the Vale or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just say this. We're getting to the point. Well, let me just speak for myself. I don't want to speak for you. I'm getting to the point in the show, guys, where it's getting really difficult to remember all these details. Um, That's why I have to write everything down. Right. Keep sure. in mind, this is our first time watching this show. I'm starting to see that this show is becoming one of the most complex, politically driven. Like, you can almost study this thing almost like people study history, right? So, mm-hmm. if you've seen this show multiple times, try to keep in mind that the first time you watched it, you probably didn't remember this junk. And keep in mind that I am doing the best I can. But it is starting to get really crazy. I hope you guys are enjoying the journey that we are on. One thing I can say is, guys, we are genuinely doing our best to try to understand this show and to think about the little, you know, the little political things that are going on. All the all the little, like, even, like, the way that people look at each other, the way their right. eye movements are. You know, we're really trying to pay attention to those details and doing the best we can. So, hope you guys are enjoying the content. I hope that we're still doing a good job with the series. We are on season three. So, if you've been watching since the beginning, man, comment and let us know that you've been here since the beginning. And... Hopefully we're just doing a good job catching it because I feel a little insecure about the fact that I'm not sure what's going on with the Lord of the Light stuff. Right. Which right. I'm sure many people when they first watched this were the same way. I'm not going to lie. I'm also kind of feeling a little insecure about the fact that I'm not sure what's going on with this, this curly haired torturer that's beating up on Theon. Oh yeah. I feel like there's something that I should know. Like I should know who that guy is maybe. The show has told us, the show has given us hints so far and of if what's I look going back, on there. Oh, and I just feel like we should have picked that up, but yeah, it's difficult. Uh, if you don't know, man, Mrs. October does the editing on Game of Thrones. This is like her little series because she was learning to edit, man. So she started editing these Game of Thrones videos. This is hers. I usually work on other things and she works on Game of Thrones specifically. If there's stuff I see, though, that I feel like I need to share with them, I do. But sharing is one thing. Seeing it a million times is another. Yeah, Mrs. October sees these episodes a lot more than me, man. She's in it, editing, scrubbing through the timeline, catching all these details, taking her notes. And I'm glad that she is, man, because she is definitely helping me keep up. I could not be as caught up as I am without her, for sure. 
So well, you do that with, for me in the um, superhero stuff. So. <laughs> right, yeah, that's true. Go check out those, man, and you'll see the you'll see that role reversal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to keep chipping or any, away at this. Or the word quantum. If the word quantum's used, I need his help. Anytime we're talking about, like, anything physics or, you know, when we're talking about, like, any of that stuff, man, she usually needs a little help. But, hey, when it comes to this, like, I'm not catching, like, there's a lot of stuff that I just, a lot of detail stuff, because I'm a, I'm a dude, right? So, my mind isn't <laughs> as detail-oriented, so. Um, right, I'm really, like, I pick up on, like, really, like, this sounds weird, but, like, drama, like, drama, like. If right. there's drama, I like kind of feed into it in my mind. Right. And I like kind of amplify it and like do it and serve it out times 25. And you I know feel that. like I have a good gut, like a good gut instinct on like who these characters are. And, and you're I not as like emotional towards them. I noticed like for me, like I was watch like when we were watching Theon talk to that guy, I was just like, oh, like, oh. And I was really like feeling emotional towards that guy. That guy like kind of won my heart because it was like, oh, he's helping Theon. Like what a great dude. To not be a great dude at all. Like, he's yeah. literally ripping your man's finger off the next episode. Well, guys, I'll be 100% honest with you. I give this show a 500 out of 10, right? Yeah, me too. I say that because here's the thing about YouTube. If I say, hey, guys, the grass is green and the sky is blue, you guys are not going to listen to what I'm saying. You're going to hear exactly what you want to hear. You're going to interpret it how you want to interpret it. And basically, my point is going to be completely lost with half of you guys. Like, I've sort of understood that at this point. I love the show, it's amazing. I'm having so much fun watching it. I don't get too emotionally invested in the characters in this one. Not too emotionally invested. Honestly, because I sort of feel like most of the people in this show sort of suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, most of the people aren't very, like, lovable, I guess. Most of them, like, the show's telling me I'm supposed to, like, really like, develop this soft spot for Jamie. Maybe I'm just, like, a hard-hearted person. But if it was up to me, I would take Jamie outside and I'd cut his head off. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing, though. You have that personality, right? Mm -hmm. But me, and I'm sure there's many others, comment below, that we kind of are, like, going episode by episode. So, Jamie, last episode, won my heart again. But I know he did all this nonsense by pushing Bran out the window, but I kind of forgot about it that episode. Does that see, I don't sense? forget that. <laughs> um, in my mind, dude... Uh, in my mind, I'm Jamie, taking it word by word instead right. of thinking about the other stuff. So, yeah, I can understand why you think that way. But I also understand why I think this way. Right. I personally think Jamie deserves his head cut off just like that one. That car star, dude. Right. Personally. Well, but maybe, I mean, but I think he deserves a second chance now. At the end of the day, we're playing different roles, right? You're you're sort of doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like Jamie in the show. You know what I'm saying? He's a likable guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The whole point is he's supposed to be terrible. And then as you get to know him, you realize, hey, there's actually... You know, there's some gray in there. It's not all black and white. And, you know, you you actually if you got to know Jamie and you understood his position and if you understood the conditions of the world and what the society was like and the pressures. And if you were in this world, I get all that 100 percent. Right. But at the same time, man, I'm with two B's, man. I, you know, I mean, I'm with two B's, too, but I, I, I sympath. I'm I guess that's the thing. I sympathize with everyone. Right. I don't like everyone. Right. I don't know how I'm, I'm still wondering when I saw that guy that was cutting off Theon's finger and being annoying. I don't know how I'm going to sympathize with him. Like, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it with Joffrey. Either, hey, if he but. gives you a soft story, you might. Oh, shoot. I know. <laughs> yeah. or, or have a dog. I might. Right. Uh, to, in my mind, dog, Jamie's like If you have a terrible. pug, I might cry. He is huh? just as evil as they come. So, but honestly, that's why I love this show. Like, don't like, but that doesn't mean that I don't love Jamie's character. Like, I love Jamie's character. Right. He's so funny. When he's on the screen, like, you guys can see it. Like, you can see it in my face. Like, I'm smiling. But at the same time, like, I love Jamie, but. He is such a great character at being such a bad, like bad guy that I really hope when his death finally comes, if it does, I hope that they do him justice and give it to him like he deserves because he's an awesome character. Like I've said it publicly, like my favorite character is at an old Joffrey. Age in bed. <laughs> Mine's Joffrey. Like that's my favorite character in the whole entire show. Even after that, even after he just already does it. That's why I like him because he's like, he's evil. Like that's what I'm saying. Man, uh... like, I love Joffrey. He's my favorite character. It's Joffrey and Cersei. Are probably my favorites right now, man. But it's only because they're so evil, but they're entertaining me. Like just because they're evil. You're one of those guys that likes the villain. That's why you like Magneto. Well, you like Jamie. Well, I don't really I don't really like Jamie. I just feel for Jamie. Like I feel Do you like you feel for Jamie or Cersei more. Oh, I feel for Jamie more than Cersei. Okay, has Cersei taken some little boy and thrown him out of a window? Has 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 Cersei grabbed a young boy who's just exploded in admiration to her? And did did she grab him with her own hands and kill him? Mm -mm. But yet you feel sorry for Jamie. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? This show's really weird like that. And there's nothing right. wrong with that. That's, you know, I, I like the villains. You know what I'm saying? And I also like to see the villains. I, I like the villains, but I also don't sit here and agree with the villains. I just right. like the villains. It's just fun to like the villains, you know? Yeah, so much fun. 
right. guys i'm loving this show i'm more invested than ever um i can't wait to get into the next episodes what's the next ones what are we on like seven and eight yeah we're about to be done with the season oh dude this show's going nuts guys like i said man I'm, I'm a little confused about the red woman thing so if there's anything that i can know that i have missed let me know in the comment section just don't spoil anything obviously but let us know like subscribe hit us up on patreon spin the octobers let's go